Hi guys, welcome to Classic Sitcoms Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Uh, today's video is on feuds between actors from that were on the same show or actors with their with their company, whatever. Uh, some of them are not really feuds, but it kind of falls into that territory. Um, so that somewhere down the line you're not going to say, well, they wasn't feud. You heard just what I said. Okay. Please don't. <laughs> um, let's take a look. David Cassidy and Jeremy Gelbox uh, from the Partridge family. When it came to the role of Chris, Brian Forrester replaced young Jeremy Gelbox. Uh, however, despite the official reasons given for the recast, the real reason is because David Cassidy said Jeremy had a personality conflict with the rest of the cast and producers. Uh, that's a pretty strong statement against a child actor, and it's dab and it's dabbly. So, when you're considering uh, Cassidy's good natured public persona, I'm Melissa Gilbert and Dean Butler from Little House on the Prairie. No, the feud isn't between Laura and Nellie Olson. They were besties off screen. Instead, there was discomfort between co stars at the time. Married couple Laura and Almanzo, played by Melissa Gilbert and Dean Butler. Gilbert, aged 15 at the time, didn't want to kiss a fully grown man with stubble. Any age difference between the two provided a huge stumbling block to the series. Uh, writers eliminated most of the kissing and intimate scenes and replaced them with side hugs. Gilbert and Butler are friends today. The entire cast of the Dukes of Hazard. Now while the Dukes seemed to be a family that couldn't be any closer, in real life the actors weren't friendly at all with one another and there was a lot of fighting on the set. Tom Wapat. Uh, who played Luke Duke, was a serious actor who was unhappy with his role and often complained about the stupid scripts. John Schneider, played Bo Duke, was happy to be included, but often shrunk his pants so that his package was more prominent. Catherine Bach was very shy, yes, even in those shorts. And Denver Powell only did his shtick and left. Even today, these actors go through serious negotiations before reunion appearances to Grimer. Uh, to garner better billing or a more advantage, advantageous uh, position on the stage. E. Plum and Maureen McCormick of the Brady Bunch. As you might expect, is a very Brady feud revolved around Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. E. Plum, who played Jan Brady and Maureen McCormick, Marsha Brady, had a long-standing feud as child actors who simply did not like one another. Rumors of a lesbian affair, they were children, is believed to be at the core of the issue, but the stress of everyday is shooting as young actors. The fallout was so great that several Brady Bunch reunions were canceled because of the girls. It was during the Brady Bunch house renovation that they straightened out their relationship. Betty White and B. Author The Golden Girls is legendary for its characters' sass and witty comebacks, but apparently not all those unhanded insults were just acting. It's not entirely clear on exactly why uh, Arthur disliked White. However, Betty White claimed it might have something to do with her positive attitude. White said in 2011 interview that Arthur wasn't a fan of White's cheerfulness, as Arthur herself had a very serious and professional attitude. Gabe Kaplan and Marcia Strassman from Welcome Back, Cotter. As a title character, Gabe Kaplan was a lovable comedian. Despite his presence and other strong actors on the show, the wheels came off of Welcome Back, Cotter uh, pretty quickly. Marcia, Marcia Strassman, who played his wife, uh, was absolutely miserable during doing scenes with Kaplan and hated the series. Things grew so heated on the set that everyone was forced to take sides. During the fourth season, Kaplan himself was reduced to appearing in only a handful of episodes, even though it was his show. Roz Kelly and Henry Winkler from Happy Days. Everyone knows how cool Buffons was, and the cast was thrilled, and the writers gave him a new cool girlfriend. Entered Roz Kelly as Pinky Tuscadero, slated to be his longtime lover. However, Kelly found herself at odds with Winkler. Winkler, after clashing with the rest of the cast and crew, poor Pinky was written out after only three episodes. Later on, she claimed that uh, she didn't have anything in common with a bunch of rich kids as she grew up on welfare, which is not exactly a convincing argument. Uh, Farrah Fawcett, Kate Jackson, and, and ABC on Charlie's Angels. When a hit show and a cast dream about ABC and Aaron Spelling felt like they hit, they hit the jackpot with Charlie's Angels. However, at the end of the first season, Farrah resigned, and that caused a legal battle, as all three Angels had signed five-year deals. 
ABC reluctantly released her from her contract, and a new angel was found in Cheryl Ladd. However, trouble continued in the third season as Kate Jackson was unhappy with her part and sought time off to shoot the movie Kramer vs. Kramer. The producers refused her, and the part of Joanne Kramer went to Meryl Streep, who won an Oscar. Kate got her way and was dropped after causing several script incidents. Uh, Larry Hagman and CBS on Dallas. Uh, go back to summer of 80 when JR had been shot and America was starting to go Dallas crazy. Hagman suddenly became a huge star and realized it was perfect time to renegotiate his contract. But CBS Laura Marr and Phil Capice disagreed. So Larry went on strike and he literally left the show and left California, refusing to return to work unless he got a hefty salary raise. On June 12, 1980, the first day of shooting for the new season, Larry was conspicuously absent from the set. After ten long, hot days, Laura Marr gave in to Hagman's demands and paid him a whopping $75,000 per episode. Suzanne Summers and John Ritter from Three's Company. Summers played uh, beloved secretary Chrissy Snow for five seasons, but her contract was not renewed after she asked for a raise. That would put her on par with co-star John Ritter's salary. So we went in to renegotiate for the year six because we had to. My contract was up, she explains. And they fired me. They fired me for asking to be paid uh, the same as men. But the actual feud arose when Summers was fired, mostly because Ritter was mad that she considered herself on par with his humor. Summers claimed she was shunned by everyone on the cast and never spoke to anyone again. She and Ritter did make peace prior to his death. And George Papard and Mr. T of the A-Team. George Papard considered himself a proper movie actor and took the role of the elder in the A-Team. However, it didn't take long to see that Mr. T was going to be the star. Things went from bad to worse when Papard uh, found out that Mr. T was being paid more than he was and refused to speak to him directly, sending messages through Benedict. Papard refused to even use his name and called him the man with the gold. Robert Vaughn joined the cast in the fifth season because it was believed he could ease the tensions between the men. And last but not least, Will Smith and Janet Hubert, or Hubert, uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. On screen, it would be hard to notice that Will Smith and Aunt Vivian actress Janet Hubert uh, didn't get along. Conflicts over money and personality clashes led to Hubert's dismissal and Aunt Viv's recasting after season three aired. Uh, since then, Hubert was publicly criticized Smith claimed that he and another actor destroyed her career. Even 25 years later, that feud has gone on strong. In 2016, during the Oscars, she posted a dig at Smith while also slamming Jada Pinkett Smith. Uh, like um, Dean Butler and uh, Melissa Gilbert. It wasn't really a feud. It was just, uh, it was nonsense to make them do that anyway. Uh, it was just crazy. Or, um, um, I think that's sad. I don't think Marsha and Jan was a feud was that big, and, and the lesbian thing that went around was just sad. I mean, they were kids. Uh, but the one with uh, Aunt Viv and uh, Will Smith, I believe they made up during a, uh, I'm not even sure what his appearance of. I think they did like a table read or something uh, of the Fresh Prince Bel Air. Anyway. It is what it is. I have more of these, and I'll be showing more of these somewhere down the line, so be prepared for that. Uh, please don't forget about classic rock and uh, country facts and trivia. Classic rock and country music facts and trivia. Please subscribe over there. Thank you. Today's is a real heartbreaker, so go over there and take a look at it. I appreciate it. Um, have a great day. God bless you, and I'll be praying for you.